Hi there. My name is Kevin Butler, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the McKinney Community Band Virtual Instrument Petting Zoo. A tradition for our fall concert has always been to have an instrument petting zoo where anyone can touch and see the instruments of our band up close and personal. Given the current pandemic and safety restrictions, though, this year it is not possible. So instead, we've asked some of our members to record themselves explaining their instruments. These individual member videos have been corralled here into our very first virtual instrument petting zoo. We hope you enjoy yourselves, and please do not feed the musicians. Marsha Hope and I play flute for the McKinney Community Band and the McKinney Flute Choir and I would love to tell you a little bit more about the flute today. Flutes are part of the woodland family of instruments. You might think that's a little weird because this flute is made of metal. But flutes are one of the oldest musical instruments and earlier flutes were made of wood and there are still flutes made of wood today. Flutes have even been made from animal bone. One was discovered carved from a cave bear thigh bone over 43,000 years ago. But today, most flutes are made of metal, like silver or gold. The flute is made up of three pieces or joints, the head joint, the body, and the foot joint. You put those three pieces together and voila, you have the flute. Flutes are different than other woodwind instruments because flutes don't use a reed to produce sound. So, how do you get sound out of a flute? Well, if you've ever taken a bottle and blown air into it to try to make a sound, that's pretty much how a flute works. Sound is produced when air is directed across the hole in the head joint, causing the air within the instrument to vibrate. Different pitches are made by the opening and closing of keys on the instrument. I like playing flute because of its versatility. Flutes are found in orchestras, bands, chamber groups, flute choirs, and even jazz ensembles. And flutes have a beautiful sound. I'm going to play a few excerpts so that you can hear the different tones and sounds that a flute produces. The first is from the lower register. The second is a little bit higher and a little bit more playful. And the last just, I think, showcases the beautiful tones that come out of a flute. enjoyed learning a little bit about the flute today and I hope to see you playing flute in a band or orchestra real soon. Hi everyone my name is Carl Lampe and I'm a member of the McKinney Community Band and this is the French horn. Even though it's called French the French horn's roots can't actually be traced to parts of France, but to parts of Germany. But historians can't make a positive identification exactly where the horn originated. So in band and orchestra today, we have a tendency to just call them horn. The horn's ancestors were used in the 17th and 18th century. The horn player would ride at the front of the pack on a horse and play certain horn signals to tell the parties what to do. This is the modern horn, and as you can tell, it has many feet of tubing. The original horn only had one set of tubing flaring out into this bell. The horn is a member of the brass family. 
All brass instruments make sounds by buzzing the lips and making that buzz on the mouthpiece. As you can see, the French horn mouthpiece is very small, and in fact, it's the smallest of all the mouthpieces in the brass family. The horn can be played with the hand placed on the outside of the bell, but this gives the horn a very loud and brassy sound. Some comp composers will write music to have the horn played that way, but that's only for special effects. The French horn is also unique in that the right hand is placed inside of the bell of the horn, and this gives the horn that beautiful sound. The hand can be moved back and forth inside of the bell, and that provides tuning and gives the horn different sounds. <laughs> The horn, unlike other instruments in the band and orchestra, is played with the sound going backwards away from the audience, giving the horn section a very beautiful sound. The horn has a wide range of notes from low to high. Here it is, low to high. sound blends very well with all the other instruments in the orchestra and band. Plus, it's just a beautiful looking instrument. You've been wonderful to listen to this, and I'm finishing by playing the beginning of Beethoven's Sonata for horn and piano. Thank you for watching. <laughs>
And I hope you like learning about the clarinet. My name is Sarah Brody and I play the oboe in the McKinney Community Band. The oboe is a woodwind instrument that originated in France as early as the 17th century. The oboe is made up of three parts. The upper piece, where your left hand goes, the lower piece, where your right hand goes, and the bell, which will project its sound. You'll also use a reed, which inserts into the top hole. My reed's been soaking in some water, so it is ready to go. Oboe reeds are double reeds, which means there are actually two pieces of wood that are tied tightly together, and they create a small little tunnel. To make the sound go through, you have to blow all your air through the tiny hole in the reed. Insert the reed in top and line it up straight, and you're ready to play. To make notes happen, you move your fingers into different positions over the keys, and sometimes you even roll your top finger like this. My favorite thing about the oboe is its unique sound. The oboe can be both mellow and colorful, playful and serious. I love to hear the personality of the oboe in orchestras and bands, and it's a lot of fun to play as well. I'll play some for you now. First, I'll play a piece that is both mellow and on the lower register. And here is something in the higher register that is a little more playful. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about the oboe. <laughs>
that really uh, uh, abrasive, brassy kind of sound. And so I'll play something uh, a little technical for you. <laughs> That's the beauty of the instrument is that it can play long and, and luscious, beautiful sounds, but it also uh, has the uh, agility and ability to play uh, technical sounds as well. So, But this was the euphonium, and I uh, enjoyed talking about it, and I hope you did too. Hello, my name is Rachel, and I play percussion for the McKinney Community Band. Percussion includes a wide variety of instruments, such as drums, cymbals, xylophones, gongs, bells, and many, many more. But today I will be specifically introducing you to an instrument you may have never heard of. It's called the marimba. The marimba is a mallet percussion instrument, meaning it can produce several different notes of different pitches. Think of it like a big piano, then instead of playing with your fingers, you play by striking it with a mallet. So here's an example of mallets. They can come in all shapes and sizes and materials, each helping the player to produce a unique sound on the instrument. The instrument itself has rather obscure origins. It may have come originally from either Southwest Asia or Africa as early as 500 AD. The marimba consists of a set of wooden bars struck with mallets to produce musical tones. The bars are wider and longer at the lowest pitch notes and gradually get narrower and shorter as the notes get higher. Vibrations from the bars resonate as they pass through the tubes, which amplify the tone in a manner very similar in the way in which the body of a guitar or a cello would. I personally love playing the marimba because of its unique sound, and I'll give you an example of that right now. Ty Hawkins and I play bassoon in the McKinney Community Band. The bassoon is a member of the double reed family and is also a woodwind. We say it's a member of the double reed family because of the specific way that my reed is created. If you look closely you can see that it's actually two pieces of reed one on top of the other. When I blow into them they don't sound that great but when I put that onto the bassoon it sounds a whole lot better. The bassoon is comprised of several different parts. The bottom part, right down here, is called the boot joint. Next, right here, this is called the wing joint. The wing joint is where all the high notes are created. On the other side is the bass joint. That creates all of the low notes. And then the lowest note on the bassoon of all is created by the bell up here. This metal part coming out, that's called the vocal, and that helps get the air from my reed into the instrument itself. The bassoon is actually a very versatile instrument. It's used both in concert bands, like you see uh, with the McKinney Community Band. It's also used in orchestral works, uh, such as you would see with the Dallas Symphony. So the bassoon bounces back and forth and can play uh, many, many different genres of music, and it's a lot of fun to play. I'm going to play for you now uh, an excerpt, actually, that you might know. It's from The Sorcerer's Apprentice by Paul Ducat. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed that selection from The Sorcerer's Apprentice, and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the bassoon. My name is Chris Heider and I play alto saxophone in the McKinney Community Band. 
The alto saxophone is part of the woodwind family of instruments. It was invented in the early 1840s by a Belgian named Adolf Sax. It is the most modern instrument in use in concert band today and is also one of the only ones invented by a single person. The saxophone consists of three main parts. The body, which is usually in a curved fashion like this, made of brass with all the keys. The neck piece, which is this here. And then the mouthpiece, which is usually made of hard rubber, sometimes a brass as well, or a combination. The other very important part about the saxophone is the reed. Uh, this one is a synthetic reed made of a plastic, but reeds were traditionally only made from cane, uh, which is why they're part of the woodwind family, since cane is wood. To attach the reed to a saxophone, it is laid flat on what is called the table of the mouthpiece, like so, and then it's secured with a ligature. The ligature is made of a variety of materials as well. This one happens to be brass. Sound production on the saxophone is made by blowing air across the reed, uh, creating an oscillation, and then moving the air column in the instrument. Even on the neck, the saxophone makes a pitch. Once attached to the body, the saxophone pitches can be adjusted with the keys, opening and closing. I enjoy playing the saxophone for many reasons, uh, but its versatility is probably one of the most important to me. Uh, it can be obviously played in jazz, marching band, concert band, uh, but it's also a main staple of early rock and roll, pop bands, uh, you name it, uh, the saxophone can probably fit in, uh, which is probably why it's one of the most popular instruments. Uh, next, I'd like to play a little for you, showing off its uh, tonal qualities. The saxophone can be very lyrical, which is why it's used in a lot of solos, for its close proximity of how it can mimic the human voice. The saxophone can also be very soulful, which is why it's used in a lot of blues and jazz music. But the saxophone can also be very funky and fun. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed learning about the saxophone. Hello, my name is Mike Duffy. I'm one of the trumpet players with the McKinney Community Band. This is a B-flat piston valve trumpet. It's the most uh, popular kind in the United States at this time, and especially in the environments that I play in, which is community band and jazz band. There are all kinds of trumpets. Bass trumpets, piccolo trumpets. There are trumpets that are six feet long because they're unrolled. B-flat, C, D, E-flat, F, probably keys that I've never heard of, bugle, cornets, flugelhorns, and they're all very closely related to one another. The fully modern trumpet was developed in about the year 1815, which makes it one of the younger instruments in a band. Uh, the Haydn, the Hummel, and the Leopold Mozart trumpet concertos were um, all written before the invention of the fully modern trumpet, um, the latest of which being in 1796. Okay, so one of the questions that was asked is, uh, how many pieces does your instrument come apart in? Now that's kind of an interesting question. It varies a little bit by model of trumpet, and I'm not going to count, like for example, these little pieces, that's welded on, and this little joint is welded, and that's welded there. So I'm not going to count anything that you have to have a torch to take it apart. Uh, but for the common trumpet, say about uh, 50, about 50 pieces or so, now sound is produced on the trumpet by making an aperture in the lips and blowing air through in such a way that the lips vibrate against one another. You put that through the mouthpiece and then furthermore through the trumpet. Okay, what I'd like to do for you is demonstrate one of the fun things about trumpets. Mutes. There are various mutes that you can place 
in the end of the trumpet in order to alter the sound. And that's one of the most fun things about playing the instrument. Well, I hope you've had fun listening to some of the sounds that a trumpet can make, and uh, goodbye for now. See you next time. Thanks. Thank you again for visiting our zoo. I hope you learned more about the instruments, and I, I hope we can see each other again very soon. And that's the way it is.